Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at derivatives on Bifidex, what they are, how to use them, and how they compare to the leader in the space Bitmex. In that regard, we will mostly be looking at volume, fees, and safety record. To save you watching to the end, I'll give you my overall impressions now. And they are, it is a usable product, while the fees are a bit higher than Bitmex, and the volume is a lot less, which does lead to higher spreads and higher costs. Those cost differences are not insurmountable. If you are more comfortable with Bitfinex than Bitmex, you may be willing to pay that extra cost. Personally, I use Bitmex more. There are also a few products that Bitfinex offer that Bitmex don't, namely a coin called Amplefort, and more interestingly, they offer a derivative of gold and a derivative of the index of Bitcoin dominance. These novel products have fairly low volume, but they are not traded on any other major site. Before I talk more in depth about derivatives and using them on Bifinex, if you are looking to sign up to the site, I have some affiliate links in the description below that will get you reduced fees on both Bifinex and Bitmex, as well as others. While I do make money from you using these, I can sincerely say that you should use an affiliate link. Even if it's not mine, use someone's, as less fees are of course better. Also, if you find this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Right, first, what are derivatives? I'll leave a link to this web page so you can do some further reading on it yourself. But put simply, they are a way to bet on the price of Bitcoin going up or down without ever actually buying Bitcoin. This is done by buying and selling pieces of paper pretending to be Bitcoin. Now, how do Bitfinex keep that piece of paper pretending to be Bitcoin at the same value as real Bitcoin? They do this the same way as Bitmex do, through funding every eight hours. We can see more about this funding if I go and have a look at the analytics. Here is the previous month of the funding rates. If the price of Bitcoin is too low, people will be paid to be long. And if the price is too high, people will be paid to be short. We can see that here when it's below the line. The price of Bitcoin was actually too high and people were paid to be short. And when it's above, vice versa. This mechanism keeps the price roughly in line with the real value. Now, this is really important to know and understand because you can make or lose a lot of money through this mechanism. We can see something quite similar over on Bitmex where they also have a funding every eight hours. Now, the fact that you're not buying real Bitcoin means that you cannot take it off the site. So Bitfinex can monitor your losses so they are able to offer 100 times leverage, which is the same as on Bitmex. But be warned, unless you really know what you're doing, I would not use more than three times leverage. Other than that, buying and selling derivatives is just like buying and selling the real thing. Let's, uh, let's go through an example how we might do that. If I, I just put in the price I'm willing to pay, so let's say I want to pay $11,500 for, let's say, one Bitcoin. Now, as standard, this would be set to one, uh, one leverage, that is, which means you need to have $11,500 to buy this one Bitcoin. So everything is normal now. But if you play around with this leverage, you can reduce how much money you need to make this deal. Like I said, I would not recommend using anything above three. You can also use increments. So let's say 1.5, but let's set it to the maximum I would recommend three. To buy this one Bitcoin at this price, you will now only need to have roughly $4,000 in your derivative account. Also below here, it tells you your liquidation price if you were to go long and here if you were to go short, because it does not know if you're gonna buy or sell at this point. Now these liquidation prices are really important as when you're buying derivatives, you cannot just buy it and go away, come back later. You need to keep an eye on these prices. If your price comes anywhere near this, they will shut down your trade and you will lose a few percent of money while they do that. If you're using leverage, you always have to be vigilant. As I mentioned earlier, there is more than one product here. We have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Gold, Amplefort, and Bitcoin Dominance down here. Now, I don't think I need to talk much more about Bitcoin or Ethereum. And to be honest, I don't know that much about Amplefort. But what really interests me is the Gold derivative and the Bitcoin Dominance derivative. Not so much for these products themselves, more the fact that Bifinex are willing to innovate with these products. I would love to see in the future some sort of stock indexes here, or even individual stocks. That would be really interesting. In comparison, Bitmex offer Bitcoin, Cardano, Bitcoin Cash, EOS, Ethereum, Litecoin, Tron, and Ripple. 
much more choice, but they're all cryptocurrency. So no real innovation outside the cryptocurrency space. Now let's compare the volumes traded. The most traded projects on Bitfinex are Bitcoin and Ethereum. We're both with roughly about four, 4 million US dollars traded every 24 hours. If we can compare that to Bit BitMEX, uh, we can see a much larger number. If we go down here, 24 hour turnover, when I hover over it, it shows me in Bitcoin. So if I remove the mouse, it shows me about $2 billion. So 2 billion compared to 4 million, that's about 500 times larger. And this larger, this larger volume does translate into something real. It translate, translates into larger spread. We can see here about a $4 gap between the prices on offer. And even those, um, there's probably more like a $10 gap when we take into account and uh, the liquidity here. Whereas on BitMEX, you'll be rare to see anything less than the minimum 50 cent gap. Also, you'll see how many trades are made over here on BitMEX. If we look at the time here, 11.34, or well, we can just see trades happening right now. If we scroll down, it takes uh, hundreds and hundreds of trades in the last minute or two. Whereas we go back over to BitFinex, in the last minute or two, there is, Oh, I guess there is about five or six trades, but we need to, if we go back even the last hour, it's probably only about 20 or 25 trades. That does mean it will take you longer to get in or out of a deal unless you're willing to pay that instant fee and that will also eat up into the spread. Meaning in this regard, BitMEX is significantly cheaper to use because of this volume. In uh, Bitfinex's defense though, if we go back to analytics, we can see that their open interest is growing steadily. They have only been around a month, so you could expect this to continue growing, and maybe they will be able to match BitMEX someday. Now, fees are another way that Bitfinex may cost you more. First, if we have a look at fees on BitMEX, they are, uh, here they are here, they're all the same for all perpetual contracts. They are minus 0 0.025 uh, maker fee and a plus 0 0.075 taker fee. Or another way to phrase that, which is how BitMEX, BitFinex uh, phrase it, if I scroll down here, uh, they phrase it as a maker rebate and a taker fee. So basically you get paid uh, to be the maker. You get paid to wait for your trade to complete and you have to pay to have your trade complete instantly. The same as BitMEX here. The only difference is they will pay you a little less. So that means your overall fee, if you take the average of these two numbers, is a little higher than on BitMEX. Although if you trade over a million dollars, the average uh, between these two numbers becomes the same as on BitMEX. And if you trade over 10 million, you'll actually be making, it'll be cheaper than using BitMEX, which is of course a bit out of reach for most of us. Although if you are able to run some sort of algorithmic trading, you may be able to get to those large volumes, even if you only have a more realistic starting amount. Lastly, let's talk about safety. Bitfinex does have a checkered history with a famous hack in 2016 that did cost all users about 36%. That number is somewhere here on this page. I'll leave a link to this page in the description below as well. While there have not been any breaches since then, they are also currently under investigation by the New York Attorney General into allegations regarding their currency tether. And while BitMEX does have a clean record, it has not stopped. There's plenty of suspicion about that platform as well. My opinion is that you need to put a risk factor on depositing money on any site. I put a slightly larger risk on Bitfinex than I do on BitMEX, but not large enough for either of them to stop me using it. Hopefully that covers most of the basics. And to repeat my summary from the start, I am willing to recommend Bitfinex, especially if you want to trade their unique derivatives, but also if you are just more comfortable with using Bitfinex over BitMEX. Although if you are willing to change, you will get more volume and slightly less fees. That's all from me. Thank you for watching. If you have any follow-up questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Have a great day.